Welcome to Voter Education Forum of the Prince George's County League of Women Voters. My name is Gloria Johnson and I co-chair the Forums and Voter Education of Prince George's County League of Women Voters. Welcome to Voter Education Forum concentrating on Question J, a recommended Prince, George, Prince George's County Charter Amendment that will increase the current two-term limit to three terms as an intermediate step. This matter will be decided by the voters in the general election for, 20, for 2014. The League of Women, Women Voters is a nonpartisan but political organization of women and men that encourages informed and active participation in government. The League works to increase understanding of major public policy issues and also influences public policy through education and advocacy. As an organization that encourages informed and active participation in government, the League of Women Voters is excited to provide the citizens of Prince George's County the opportunity to hear the responses of five invited panelists who had volunteered to give information and opinions about the pros and cons of the proposed amendment. We have invited a member of the Charter Amendment Commission, Mr. J. Kenneth Battle, Jr. We have also invited, next to him, Delegate Aisha Braveboy. Seated next to her is Republican Central Committee staff member, Joseph Swartz. And next to Mr. Swartz is uh, attorney Ken Lucci, who's representing the county exec. And at spot number one, we have former delegate Jerron Levi. These illustrious panelists have been invited to share their views and opinions about the pros and cons of the recommended charter amendment and to respond to questions raised by members of the League of Women Voters and questions from the audience. Maybe it is a question that you may have. It is our hope that by hearing the information gathered from the panelists who have researched the substantive issues, it will give voters an opportunity to hear and examine information to help you formulate or fortify your own opinion. The League of Women Voters takes no view on the matter raised by Question J. We simply want to evaluate the various views and opinions in several substantive issues so that you can make an informed voting decision. Before we start, I'd like to thank Mayor James Walls and the City of District Heights who have opened their doors to us once Mr. Jerome Williams agreed to tape this forum for us. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Prior to the invitation being accepted, we gave each of the panelists rules. All of our forums go according to League of Women Voters rules. And each of the panelists, in addition to receiving a written email, has in fact signed a statement agreeing to the following. They have two minutes to do an opening statement. Each panelist will thereafter be given 60 seconds to respond to questions. And our timekeepers will signal the panelists when 15 seconds are left, as well as when to stop. Oh, there is also a 30 second notice. After the panelists have given their responses to the last question, each panelist will be allowed to make an, a closing statement not to exceed one minute. All questions during this forum will be presented by the moderator. Welcome and let us begin. The panelist pulled numbers and the person who was actually left with number one is Miss Levy. Miss Levy, would you like to make, I'm sorry, Levi, 
Would you like to make an opening statement? Uh, yes. First of all, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum to educate voters about Question uh, J. Make no bones about it. Question J and the effort to repeal term limits in the county is, is an inside job. It's a, it's a plan put together by incumbent politicians who don't want to give up office and their lobbyists and friends who stand to benefit from them remaining in office. Let's compare how question J got to the ballot versus how the county adopted term limits in the first place. Over 30,000 signatures were collected by citizens to place the term limits question on the ballot. That's why the county has term limits. Over 30,000 signatures were also collected to put the tax rate cap on the ballot. That was also a citizen-led initiative. The Charter Commission, which has been appointed by the county executive and the county council, has both of those issues in, in, in its bullseye. They want to repeal term limits. They want to get rid of the tax rate cap. This, 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 is, this is to apply to incumbent uh, elected officials for them to remain in office. So compare the citizen-led effort to put term limits into the charter versus insider politicians saying we want to stay in office and putting a question on the ballot. I want you to know they've tw tried it twice before and it's failed twice before by overwhelming margins. Uh, the voters of this county have reaffirmed term limits in 2000 and 2004. This is another effort to just whittle down the will of the people in terms of something they want. I also want to say this, term limits are not rare. Our governor has a two-term limit. The president of the United States has a two-term limit. Uh, uh, five jurisdictions in Maryland have term limits. Fifteen state legislators, eight of the ten largest cities in America, and 37 states have term limits. Term limits are not rare. They are a check on power. And Mr. Lucci, would you like to make an opening statement, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you, League of Women Voters, for hosting this forum this morning. My name is Len Lucci. I'm an attorney. I live in Bowie. I, uh, I'm an attorney with O'Malley, Miles, Nyland, and Gilmore out of Calverton. And I'm a proud uh, resident of Prince George's County for more than 50 years. Doesn't seem like that, but 50 years. Um, I support Question J uh, because I want to keep a good thing going. Question J does not eliminate term limits. It extends it from two terms to three terms. And the reason why I want to keep a good thing going is because the past four years we've had a great team putting great points on the scoreboard. We've had a 38% reduction in homicide, 30% reduction in violent crimes. We've expanded our commercial tax base by almost $5 billion, which means that residents don't have to worry about their social or as much of their share for keeping the county government going. We have a new hospital coming to Prince George's County that will be run by the University of Maryland Medical Systems. We've turned the corner in our school system. We have an economic development incentive fund of $50 million, more than any other jurisdiction, to lure uh, more commercial investment in the county. We picked, the county has picked the six uh, most challenged neighborhoods in this county and focused all the county resources on them in terms of education and public safety. And that's been an amazing thing that's been award winning. And there's a new day in terms of ethics, the new Office of Ethics and Accountability and new state ethics laws. So when you have a winning team, you want to keep them in place. And if you don't have a winning team, you could always vote them out. But the point is, why should we have uh, term limits when our, our neighbors that we compete with, Montgomery County and D.C. and Fairfax County, uh, don't have term limits? It's like having a battle or a competition with a one-armed tie behind our back. So I love Prince George's County. I support Prince George's County. I want to keep the, a good thing going in Prince George's County. And that's why I support Question J. Thank you, Mr. Lucci. Mr. Sports, would you like to make an opening statement uh, limited to two minutes? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So uh, thanks again to the League uh, for putting this on. I think education events like this are really critical in educating voters, and, and that's, that's important. Uh, so when I hear legislation proposed, I usually start kind of with another question, right? So what is the problem that we're actually trying to solve? And in this particular instance, the proponents of Question J usually cite two problems. I know in one article, uh, in one article, there was uh, the possibility that uh, folks on the county council or the county executive may not be able to uh, 
vest in the retirement program at the county because they could potentially only serve eight years and if they didn't serve two more years in government they may not vest fully that was uh, put out in some of the uh, press releases and uh, you know to my mind the natural solution to that is not to extend term limits it's to change the vesting rules for retirement plans um, but there's another problem that's that's purported and it's one uh, allegedly of experience so what the proponents of term limit repeal are essentially arguing is that council members or the county executive are not capable of coming up to speed on their job quickly enough. And it's an argument for which I have profoundly little sympathy. Uh, during my first job as an active duty army officer, I was immediately responsible for six and a half million dollars worth of high tech equipment and given responsibility for the lives of 18 men. Um, there were other people that had more experience and helped me along. And I don't deny the value of experience. Council members and the county executive are not coming into this as a first job. In many instances, they're coming into these careers from government or from private practice law or backgrounds of community activism. And even where there is an experience deficit, that's why one has advisors and mentors. They're not in the job alone. You know, just ask the governor or the president. They only ser serve two terms as well. Our term limits shouldn't be seen as a political advantage, a disadvantage. They should be seen as a unique and enviable bulwark against institutionalized corruption. They bring new blood in more frequently, which often leads to more ideas, and they spread the responsibility of self-government over a wider base of leaders. Delegate Brayboy, would you like to make an opening statement? Yes, thank you very much. And I really want to thank the League of Women Voters for being the leaders in our community to educate um, citizens. Oftentimes, uh, we, are t we are educated by people who have certain agendas. And your agenda is to have people participate in the democratic process. And there's no more noble agenda for democracy than that. So I really want to thank you. You know, I'm here today to speak in uh, opposition to Question J. And the reason why I am speaking uh, against it is for some, some reasons that one of my colleagues, who I respect very much, and Lynn Lucci mentioned, he talked about, you know, kind of keeping a good thing going. But the question I have is, for who? You know, in politics, um, there's always, quote unquote, winners and losers. There are communities that get more than other communities. There are um, associations that benefit from having certain elected officials in office and certain ones that don't benefit from having um, those relationships. And what happens when you have a contested election with pol new politicians who are running to, uh, to um, to, to seek certain positions in office is that they have to then reach out to all communities. So it actually enhances our democracy to have, it, it actually enhances our democracy to have more choices. And when I say more choices, I mean choices that are real. The real reality is in Prince George's County it takes about a million or more to run for county executive and from some of the other countywide offices. And if you think about it, if we were to allow um, our elected officials to stay in uh, office um, or remain in office without having um, the public finance reform that is necessary in order to provide for opportunities for regular citizens to run for office, we will always have the same people running because no, none of us have a million dollars to run for office. I, I believe that question J is a problem and I hope that the citizens will join some of us up here in opposing it. Thank you. Mr. Battle, would you like to make an opening statement limited yes, to two minutes? Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good morning and I'd like to extend my thanks to the League of Women Voters also for inviting me here today. Uh, my name is Kenneth Battle. I'm here uh, in, with regard to my service on the Prince George's County 2013-2014 Charter Review Commission. Now, um, I was honored to uh, serve with that group. The Charter Review Commission uh, is a process that, that happens every four years. It's been going on for, uh, I, believe, I believe, about 16 years or so. Um, but the point is, is that periodically the charter is reviewed. Uh, we met for a period of three months from January through March. Uh, we met weekly. All those meetings were uh, public meetings advertised through the uh, county council's normal process, public notice process. Um, we uh, issued a report 
that report was presented to the county council one of their regular meetings um, some of our, our recommendations uh, which uh, turned into uh, legislation all of those uh, legislative proposals were uh, vetted through the council's process and um, question J of course the one that we're here to talk about today uh, the recommendation was based on uh, research that was done based on uh, we, we did some national research but we also did uh, regional and statewide analysis uh, we know that Anne Arundel and Howard County also have uh, term limits and uh, in fact in Howard uh, the county exec is uh, uh, limited to two terms okay and the uh, council is three so the proposal here is to go from two terms to three terms not to limit not to eliminate uh, term limits altogether so hopefully through the discussion since my time is over I'll stop hopefully we'll get to talk more about the reason and the rationale for the recommendation thank you mr. battle now I have uh, indicated earlier that we do have forum rules this set this segment of the forum will be questions and answers. I will say to the panel, if there is something that you want to talk about other than the question that is asked, feel free. We would like for you to answer the question, but if there is something that you feel that is burning that you really need to educate the voters about, feel free to do that. The first question actually comes from our audience, and it states, the recommendations states an intermediate step and this is not stated on the ballot why is this referred to as an intermediate step does this mean term limits will be eliminated and just for the edification of the office who of the audience who may not know what the the statement will be on the ballot it is the proposal to amend Prince George's Charter quote, to extend number of terms from two to three consecutive terms, and a person can serve on the county council and as county exec, okay? So it's to extend the term from two to three consecutive terms that a person can serve as county council and as county exec. So this member of the audience wants to know um, why is it referred to in the report as an intermediate step. Mr. Lucci? Well, I was not on the commission, but it seems to me that the issue is democracy, whether you want to have arbitrary uh, rules to restrict a voter's choice. And if that's a kind of a principle you have, either you're for those types of arbitrary rules or you're against it. But as a practical matter, the last time uh, an amendment was, was done on this was to eliminate all term limits, and it went down. And so. I think that's the reason behind doing it from two terms to three terms, uh, to make it uh, gradual. But all this ballot does is to, this question does is to extend it to three terms. It would take a future charter amendment to completely abolish them. But it's more of a philosoph philosophical position. And that is, in a democracy, do you want to arbitrarily limit what a voter can do and how, who they can vote for, uh, or do you not? And that's why I think it's probably the sense of the commission uh, to uh, say this is just an interim step. Uh, but it takes another act of the county council or a petition to the ballot, and then takes the voters of Prince George's County to completely el eliminate them. But three terms is a pretty good thing. It's tough to ask someone to really serve more than 12 years any anyway. So that's uh, the reason. Thank you, Mr. Lucci. Mr. Swartz, would you like to answer that question? So uh, I would echo uh, what uh, Mr. Lucci said in terms of uh, I, you know, was not on the commission. However, there are a couple things that that I would that I would add about that. So the first is that um, the yes, the charter commission recommended it as an intermediate step, and it's true that this particular proposal will only uh, change the term limits from two to three. But it's very much like the old, uh, like the old adage about uh, you know putting a putting a frog in boiling water versus putting the frog in water and slowly heating it up. This is an attempt to raise the amount of term limits, uh, make people and and then come back later and say, see that wasn't so bad. Now let's eliminate term limits. In my view, that's that's what this goes to. And we can talk about arbitrary. I don't think it's arbitrary. There's a difference between an arbitrary restriction and a reasonable restriction that's based on valid. 
concerns over institutionalized corruption and the concentration of power. Proponents uh, will want you to believe that this is about democracy, but I would say that in 1992, the citizens here in Prince George's County absolutely exercised um, democracy by having a citizen-led effort to enact term limits in the first place. So, you know, when we talk about wanting people to participate in their democracy, our charter gives them an ability to do that, and the citizens of this county took that opportunity to lead an effort to get rid of, excuse me, to, uh, to enact term limits, and it passed. And it was reaffirmed by the voters um, uh, since, then since then twice. So the question I really have is what democracy are we referring to? Are we referring to the democracy of the people or the democracy of those who are in power? And I can let you know very specifically that there, the eight member uh, commission, there was lots of conversation about uh, term limits and there were opinions that um, term limits, the main thing that they do is require you to get rid of the good folks. So in a sense, you are throwing out the baby with the bathwater with term limits. So, uh, but at the same time, the commission recognized that there's, there would be opposition to um, getting rid of term limits outright. So they said, well, let's uh, recommend that you add one term. And again, there's a, a precedent there in uh, Howard County. So the deal is, is that in this region, all jurisdictions of our size, none of them have term limits. There's already a democratic process for electing who you want to elect, and uh, that's the point, I think. We're talking about people, uh, the, the council members who, who voted to uh, put this <clears throat> recommendation into legislation. We did it before the primary, so there are folks who would not benefit from this uh, who actually voted for Thank it. you, Mr. So, Battle. Wow. I'm sorry, your time One has minute. expired. It goes fast, doesn't it? <laughs> um, um, yes. Ms. Levi? Yes. Thank I you. mean, this applies to the people sitting in office right now. They want that additional term. Term limits are not rare. Uh, you know, term limits are not rare. The president, our governor, five jurisdictions in Maryland, 15 state legislatures in the country, eight of the 10 largest cities in America, uh, 37 states, it's just not rare. Let me just say this about democ democracy. It is a beautiful thing, but make no mistake about it. Money and special interest are really, really corrupting the process, and term limits are really the only check on that. I, 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 you know, I haven't calculated it all, but there were hundreds of thousands of dollars spent in this last election to reinforce the, the will of special interests and the party leaders. Anyone running for office against an incumbent is up against the incumbent's war chest, money, the slates, more money, and then independent outside expenditures. You don't know who they are. It's a lot of money and term limits are the only check on that. There is legislation pending for salary increases for county council and county executive. Is there a relationship between question J and between these two issues? Um, I just wanna indicate that that legislation passed September 2014, but let the panel take that question. Um, the first person to answer will be Mr. Swartz. So it, whether there's a direct correlation between those two, uh, those two particular uh, initiatives, I don't know. I mean, some people would say, well, obviously, you know, with a, getting a consistently fatter salary, it gives people incentive to want to stay in office as long as possible. Um, you could certainly make that, you could certainly draw that conclusion. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily, you know, a, a, a you know, demanded conclusion either. Um, I think that they feed off each other. I don't think that they necessarily drive each other. Uh, it's important for us, especially when we're looking at, you know, public servants and who's in office representing us on an elected basis, considering the difference between making sure that they're paid for their time 
and, and being incented to grab power and hold on to it because it's good business for them. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not saying that, uh, that I know all the, the you know, clockwork workings in, in the background, but I think even if those two aren't directly related right now, there's something that can, they can reinforce each other consistently over the long term and we should be concerned about them. I don't know, um, I have not polled the council or the county executive about that particular issue. But I would say that coming out um, of, as was pointed out, a period of our county where there was um, a corruption, um, there is a public trust that our politicians, I believe, have to gain. And um, initiating um, politically motivated um, charter changes as well as salary increases doesn't bode well for gaining the trust of the public. Those recommendations with regard to the salaries were not related to uh, the review of the charter. It's an analysis based on what elected officials make in the region, cost of living, the, um, the types of, of functions, the types of work that the uh, elected officials do. So it's an analysis based on what, what the salaries are in the region. Um, but I really need to say that the, um, the statements about term limits, eliminating corruption, well that's not true, we already know that. As corruption goes on, that's based on individuals' choices. Um, to, to say that term limits is a check against the uh, special interest and that kind of thing. Well, in fact, there's belief that term limits and the continual uh, cycling in and out of elected officials actually empowers the special interest. It gives them more power because they're the ones that are constant. Elected officials keep changing. There are good people serving in office. It takes a lot to step up and run for office and serve in office. So it's not about individual people necessarily. It's about how the system works. And uh, when you get into office, I mean, it's just a fact. The longer you are in office, the more you are captive to the special interest and the moneyed interest, because that's how you get reelected. So again, you have to have checks and balances in the system, because the system can have a corrupting influence over time. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. And um, I also have a respect for the fact, do you know how difficult it is for citizens to collect over 30,000 signatures to put a question on the ballot? That is very difficult. They were up against court action, hostile, I mean, retribution, hostile pushback from politicians. And I think we all ought to pause and think twice about overturning an effort, a citizen-led effort like that. The answer to the question is, is no. Now let me respond to some other things. Um, the way you overturn one effort is by having voters vote on another effort. That's still part of democracy. 1992 is a long time ago. The first George Bush was president. Seinfeld was still popular. And this county was a lot different. 2014 is a lot different from 1992. Um, let me talk about my good friends, um, Delegate Bravoy and, and, and uh, Delegate Levi. Uh, both of them were successful in being elected to the House of Delegates by running against the so-called slate. It can be done. And in Annapolis, there are no uh, term limits, and you have a lot of experience there gained by the legislators, very senior, senior legislators, committee chair, the Speaker of the House. Um, and that experience is vital, because if you don't have that experience, uh, who's in control? Uh, unelected staff is in control and lobbyists are, are in control. So you need that experience to have the institutional knowledge uh, to keep things going. They were both great state legislators. Um, I wish they were still down there representing their districts because they both did an excellent job and that's what democracy is.